Little black book. You know what time it is. 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 Time. Hey guys, and welcome back to Little Black Book. You know what time it is. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you like, you share, you subscribe, and click on that bell notifications so you can get the notifications when I upload. Now that sounded better when I said it in my head. For those of you returnees, you ain't got the minerals, baby. You ain't got the Listen, minerals, I got the power, baby. Eh, 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 eh. It sounded better in my head, trust me, it sounded so much better in my head. Um, if you ain't got the minerals, baby, you're not on mine. Eh? Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you lying? Listen, um, so we're going to talk to you guys about Married at First Sight Season 10. Yes, we've got five couples, not four, but five. We've got an hour and 40 minute episodes. Are you mad? Today, this is going to be our little summary. I think we're going to have to do that from every week now. Do a summary episode and then do the breakdown of couples. Um, but yeah, I mean... Great couple in, I think, so far from what I've seen. It looks like there's some good matches here. Mecca and um, Michael look an amazing, melatonin, sexy, chocolate couple. You know what I mean? You know how we love our, our black people here. Um, also, Taylor and Brendan looking good. Um, got a nice energy for both of them. They've got a bit of bounce about them. Bit of a comedian, both of them are. Um, also love Austin and Jessica. I think they're great. Um, I think the two of them got this nice... At this nice, almost naive vibe to them as well. I think our, my bottom two couples, um, one is Zach um, alongside Mindy. Just because I feel like when Zach's friends were grilling him, the way they grilled him, mm -hmm. we'll come on to that in a sec. And also as well, um, Katie and Derek. Now, Katie's got a boyfriend. Uh, hold on a minute, I've got to just, just quickly, just going to message my ex-girlfriend quickly. All right. Yep, just message her just to say uh, that she can't go on that show now. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm playing. But um, so yeah, I mean, with, with Kate and Derek, Kate has got her own problems. I don't know what you do when you know you're on your marriage day, on your wedding day, and you're still thinking about your ex, whether you should go with them or go with the person you're about to marry. But anyway, such is life, such as married at first sight, we're into the zone. Let's get into the quick summary for you guys as well. I'm going to do one good, one bad for each couple. So Mecca and Michael for me, Melon and Central, I feel like they both got a great energy. They're very ambitious, wanting to go far, wanting to reach for the stars. Um, and I can see that they potentially going to have a good vibe. I know he likes natural hair. She wants a man that's six foot plus with a beard. You know, just men in on both sides, you know what I'm saying? Um, and what, what I think I found interesting about them was their families. Um, in the sense of, uh, I didn't see a father figure in her particular family. I might have missed that. I might have missed that. Um, and I didn't see a father figure in his. I know that for sure because I think he's raised by his auntie and um, his cousin, who's um, he sees as his mum and his sister, basically. So there's some, there's some, there's some, there's some nice family vibe going on there for both of them which will be very interesting i think that's where my weakness comes in um how will they operate in a marriage when it seems like there's no father figures in their homes how do they both deal with that men deal with it differently women deal with it differently um and they're influenced in different ways how are they going to cope with that particular aspect they may be fine um but that was my only kind of thing to kind of say hey um, will there be a little bit of a problem here? Um, also as well, just matching up in terms of ambitions. Will they also match on the ambitions level as well? Um, that'll be an interesting kind of viewing as well. Derek and Kaylee. Um, for me, they're both energetic, very, very bubbly, very enthusiastic. I saw Katie literally dancing on um, all the people in the um, particular, um, all who were dancing on the, what was it? The hut, the, um, what would you call it? So she was going all out. She was dancing. She was being free. She was living her life. Like my girl was on things. You get me? So obviously, you know, she's a she's a lively bird. Derek too. Derek was having a bit of a, a you know some of the cutscenes of bantering and saying about how you know even talking about um, Zach's hair and saying that he think he had a better hair and such and such. So Derek's quite a cool guy. Quite a, a genuine down to earth guy. He's not had no love, but he's a genuine cool guy. Um, and I think that day that they're going to meet on that level. I think their weakness is how they're going to deal with Katie's issue of the fact that she still likes her ex-man. What is going on there? Your ex-man's texting you saying they still wants you only when you told him you're going to ready to love. I mean, uh, going on to marry at first sight. That should let you know. Boom. For Taylor and Brendan, I think they got a great vibe as well. I think the energy is great. I think they have, um, you know, 
I, I think they're gonna. Have, I think they're gonna also have a natural chemistry as well. I think um, whether they have the same banter, the same banter is gonna be the interesting part. Uh, Brendan's quite a comedian. Um, he's making quite a few jokes. I mean, I know he's making jokes about being James Bond and stuff like that when he was doing the the dress up for the groomsmen and stuff. Uh, and also she was making a couple of jokes as well about the dress that she was in and you know the dress was fire though um, and she is and she is fire Taylor is listen I think Mecca is scintillating and I think Taylor is what succulent you know what I mean both of these ladies are absolutely just you know when the chicken's out of the oven fresh and it's sizzling and it's seasoned well that's how the two of them are just juicy, you know what I mean? Um, so definitely think them two are gonna have a good vibe. Um, I think they can rub each other up the, up the wrong way. I think if they if they miss each other in terms of what they actually want, um, because Taylor's got an issue. Well, I don't want to go too deep into it, and I'll do an actual separate review. Um, but my thing for them is gonna be time. Are they gonna have enough time? You know, Taylor's working three jobs, um, and as much as anything, obviously now they'll probably have more time because they will be putting them into a false um, arena where she won't be working as much but when they start putting them into the real arena when she's got three jobs um, obviously you can contribute in that but just obviously kind of thinking about it when she's, she's got a mindset of I work for what I need to get will he match that mindset? I don't know that's the kind of thing I'm, I'm thinking so I potentially there may be some issues on that level um, for them as well so that, that could be interesting um, I don't foresee them having problems in terms of looking at each other aesthetically. I think they're both beautiful people. Um, so I think they should be alright on that one. Jessica and Austin, I think they're both very placid, vo vo both very malleable, amendable. Like Austin has just got this really naive, nerdy kind of um, way about him. You know, it, it's, it's nice to see, do you know what I mean? Um, and I think Jessica's got the same kind of vibe as well. You know, she's she wants to, she's. She's got this quirky, but she's got this um, exciting side of her as well, which her friends, uh, uh, well, I say her friends, yeah, her friends were saying. And also, you know, her twin sister as well was talking about. And I just feel like, obviously, them two, I think they will have a good, good match. I think they've got a really good chance of making it far in the, in, the, in this particular show and beyond. Because I feel like they're, they're the ones that are least likely to have arguments. Um, but... You know, that having the least album doesn't mean that you're going to work out either. So, that's another thing. I think for them, the weaknesses I see, interference um, from women. <laughs> One on his side is mum, and her side has twin sister. Um, because, you know, I know twin sister's now tied up with a man, but she was tied up with, she tied up with a man, so her focus has been on a man. But what happens when she now knows that your focus is now tied up? Do you get what I mean? And obviously, the Twin Sisters has quite a, a lot of influence on her because that's who signed her up to the show, etc, etc. So there may be something there, and maybe a voice that could speak into a relationship that can cause trouble. Um, on his side, his mum, you know, she wasn't like too o oppressed to the situation, but, you know, she spoke a little bit where she was not very, very happy, um, you know, at the situation, but she was going to go with it. Um, so I think that could be an interesting thing as well. Um, going forward, in terms of uh, Justin and 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 uh, sort of in terms of Jessica and, and, and Austin, so yeah, interesting there. Mummy issues, twin sister issues. We'll see if that if that plays a part later on in the show. Um, Zach and Mindy. I mean, for me, I I, I like Zach and Mindy because they're both outgoing. They're quite um um quite. I don't want to say energetic again. I want to say outgoing, positive outcomes, positive outlooks on life. It looks like them too. You know, especially with um, Mindy, she's gone through quite a bit already. You know, she lost a child and stuff like that. Um, and then to to you know be able to pick yourself up and, and move forward, definitely. It's a sh um, you know that's that's a that's a that's a major thing. Um, uh, Zach as well. You know, he's got his own business that he's doing at the moment. Um, he wants to he wants to he wants to really love his wife. Um, it sounds like he's got the love language acts of service, so he really wants to just love his life, etc., etc. So that's going to be interesting to kind of watch as well. I think the weaknesses for them is going to be in terms of well, one Zach's. Um, I mean, he mentioned about being um, aesthetically. You know, he wants to make sure that you know what happens if we don't find you attractive, kind of thing. And I think the way the friends were asking him a lot of questions, it's almost as if they don't think they don't think he's ready for the show, and that concerns me because even his attitude's a bit. It seems a bit arrogant, but I don't think he's that arrogant. I just think that that's the way it comes across because maybe maybe there's maybe there's a little self defense mechanism, self defense mechanism there. Maybe there is, um, and we'll find that out in the, later on in the shows. Um, but you know, there's a lot of confidence in him, um, 
Whether Mindy's that type of girlfriend, I don't know. I just, I don't know if, if Mindy is that girlfriend. I just don't know if Mindy's that one that can hold him down. That's my only concern. Um, I don't know if Mindy is that enough for him. You know, even when I saw her uh, physique, I was like, that doesn't look like a gym physique. If you know, he's a gym body. And I'm thinking to myself, he might want a gym physique. I don't know if that's the case. So that could also be another consideration in terms of um, where the potential could go a bit askew as well. Like I said, his friends were asking a lot of questions. So um, that was interesting to go by as well. I've got a few questions that I had from the actual show and I want to just kind of answer a few of them out there and throw them out to you guys as well. So get ready guys, get ready to comment in the comment section. I've got a few questions I'm going to put up there. So I think I've got eight questions. So get yourselves ready on the keyboard. I want to hear your opinions on the questions. Um, I will put them all in comments as well in the comment section. I want you guys to get involved, enter, enter the comment section and let us know your viewpoints going forward as well. Hey! So, number one was, um, do you have to settle at a certain age? Do you have to settle? And I think this is a question that is quite evident. Number one, I'm going to say this, look, your pool of dating, yeah, your dating pool does narrow as you get older, especially for women, um, because the spec of guys you're trying to go for um, they are potentially going for girls that are younger than yourself um, because men often try to have a woman that's younger than them, right? So the older you get, that pool is shrinking, yeah? Um, should you settle per se? I, I think settling might be the wrong word for somebody who's getting older. Someone who's getting older may not settle, but their expectations are adjusted. And that's different, you know? Um, because, you know, when you look at this, yeah, if you, look, if you see you've got options, yeah, you've got 10 options, yeah? You don't settle because you've got 10 options. When you've got three... From, from 10, you start to change your expectation now. Especially if you've dated a few of them, you're like, I uh, don't know. You know, and experience will tell you that, that you're not settling, but you're changing your expectations. You now understand that I can't, I can't, I, this is the thing I shouldn't fight over. It's not necessary. I don't need to be pick over that. I don't need to be pick over that or that, but that I need to be pick over. And so therefore, when you get older, it's not necessarily settling, but more of a case of, well, are you adjusting your expectations? Do you get me? You know, you're 30 and you want a 25-year-old. You, you were 25 five years ago, my darling. You've got to adjust the expectations. Kind of putting it out there. You know what I mean? Um, Austin's mum said about people who are meant to be will end up being together or whatever. But she said, I'm not sure, that's, I'm not sure if that's for a show. And, you know, the statement actually contradicts itself. It's actually a paradox. If you believe that people will meet who they need to meet and they'll get with who they need to get with, then a show can do that. Because they were meant to be on that show and they were meant to meet who they were meant to meet. Do you get it? So life can throw you lemons. It's what you do that lemons. You make lemonade, they say. Um, so it's what you do that that you that you that makes and determines who you're gonna be. So it's interesting that I think life has a way of connecting to you who you meant to connect it to, but you've also got to make right, correct choices. You know what I mean? Um, because some people, unfortunately, have been in some relationships that didn't need to be in. You know, and some people, it's the luck of the draw. It's the roll of the dice. They end up in relationships which are really toxic and bad. Um, and so that can also be a hindrance as well in the future. So, yeah, for me on that particular case, I think uh, in that particular instance, you know, people will meet who they need to meet. You know, and I said as well that people do change in marriage. I think this was Austin's that, granddad that said this. People do change in marriage. And absolutely right, they do. Yeah? And the, the law of um, entropy says that, you know what, things get progressively worse. And absolutely right. So if he's stank now, he's going to be stanker later on in a, in a marriage. So, you know, people do change. And the nature of individuals change because of ambitions, goals, um, you know, the life situations and environments change around you. And therefore you're adapting to your new environment, your new um, social, social status. Um, you're dealing with issues that are coming into your heart and into your mind that are around you, do you know what I'm saying? All of that comes into play. So when it comes to dealing with this particular issue, um, people do change, you know, and you've got to be ready for that. So why should that stop you from getting married at first sight? Because if people are going to change anyway, bruv, you, you know what I mean? You're not going to know, like, because they're going to change. Do you know what I'm saying? They're not going to be exactly the same as you when you met them the first time round. People's, uh, you know, the love that people always talk, talk about is this honeymoon phase love where it's like giddy feelings. But love is not this giddy feeling. Love is an action. It's a, a choice to make. I'm making this choice that I actually love you. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to love you. You're a dickhead at this moment, but I'm going to love you. Do you know what I'm saying? And I, I hint at the, at this moment. Don't let him continue being a dickhead. You understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then obviously with Katie as well, you've got to ask this question where it's like, why do people come back into your life when you are leaving? Well, people come back into your life when you're leaving because they simply 
um, want power over you. You know, they, they had you in a certain place. They were enjoying. They were liking it. Um, they had control of what you were doing. They knew where you were. They were testing the temperature and you were always warm. Um, whenever they wanted a conversation to boost their ego, you were there. Whenever they wanted sex, you were there. Whenever they wanted a cuddle, you were there. Whenever they wanted something from you, you were always available. And therefore, uh, by constitution of that, that is what's caused them um, to feel a certain way towards you and have this... I should say, um, have this, I guess, um, um, attitude that is, I can have you whenever I want. If I can't have you, nobody can. You understand? Like, that's why people do that. So, with Katie's particular instance, when the guy's coming back, he's only coming back because you're giving him room to come back. He's got no room to come back if you don't give him no room. Do you know what I'm saying? This day and age, why is it hard to find someone to commit? I think, do you know what? In this generation, <coughs> I shouldn't say this generation, but yeah, this generation. It can be hard to find people who are willing to commit. I think because, um, you know, men often are not serious, yeah, and they don't get serious till probably later on in their life. And the reason why is because we're not stab we're not established, we're not settled. We are victims of our own patriarchy. You know, in patriarchy where you know you want the man to be the head, the leader, the financial. Um, uh, bulldozer, the, the provider, you know, the protector, all of that kind of stuff, the mannish man, the bullish man, you want all of that. Well, when the man doesn't feel like he's actually doing that, what happens is he doesn't want to commit. Why? Because he doesn't want to tie himself down to anything he doesn't see himself being able to build from. And so when he feels like he can't build from that area, he doesn't tie himself down. How is he able to be the man's man if he can't provide? How's going to be the man's man if he hasn't got to the place where he needs to be to be able to provide a stable uh, platform for you? Because the, the echo the echo coming back or the reverberation or the feedback that's coming back is you're not a man's man but you're not earning a certain amount of money so therefore you can't provide a platform that you need to provide and therefore you're not a man's man. And so therefore what happens? Continuous cycle. Men don't want to commit. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's a, a very simplistic way of looking at it in one aspect. Other aspect is that men are just entitled. They're in a place of power and they don't feel they have to commit. They feel they can play around with certain females and then commit later on when they feel like it. And that's not how life should work, but because they're in power, it can. What do you do if you have feelings for your ex-partner on the, you know, on the wedding day, as Katie did? Katie's having, you know, a choice between the two people. She's like, I don't know if I should choose him or choose him. And you're just looking at it like, Katie, I need you to fix the frig up, okay? Katie, we can't do this, man. We can't do this, man. You can't be on a wedding day and just be trying to figure out whether you want him or him, man. You got to know what you want, man, before you get to that place. So, I mean, people get into these spaces. And these are things that, these can actually happen in real life. Like, I know it's mad at first sight, but this can actually happen in real life, yeah? This can happen in real life, which is so mad. Um, because in real life, people do get into into a marriage space or engagement space where they're still dealing with somebody. Oftentimes, sex is involved, but they still got feelings for somebody else because they're still engaged in conversation with that snake. You see, the way that Eve, the way that Eve ate the fruit from the tree, was that she was engaging in illicit conversation with a snake. When you open up the door of your relationship to snakes, they get in. Simple as. Should you support, you know, your child wanting to go into marriage at first sight, um, you know, as a parent? Um, because obviously Mindy's parents um, didn't want to support um, and are not going to back her. This is not the way to do things. If anything, we should be um, willing to back them. Even when they, we look like they're making a mistake, we should just let back them. Because the moment it does go wrong, they're going to need some support. They're going to need an exit route. You know, and, you know, people who, who end up in abusive relationships haven't often got um, great connections with people because the people have disconnected from them. And so what I've learned is that, listen, okay, my child may be making a mistake, but I've got to trust them in a situation to say, listen, look, I'm here for you. Even if you're moving mad, I'm here for you. So just in case it does go wrong, you know you can come to me. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I think in scenarios where the parent is seeing this married at first sight, yes, it is scary. Yes, it is Painful to see your daughter be in an arranged marriage, which people do anyway. Um, you know, we should be able to just go, look, as parents, I want to support you. Now, I'm not a parent, but at the same time, I want to protect my child. But at the same time, I can have, to, I'm going to have to let the reins go eventually. They're, they're old enough to make their own decisions. And therefore, I should support you in that decision. Um, it's not a time to abandon you when it's going to be such a huge decision you're taking of getting married. You know what I mean? 
So yeah, that's what I, I saw and it's a shame for Mindy because you know, it can see the pain that is in her, in her eyes, you know. Um, and a child needs to be supported, even if, we're, even if they are 25 and plus, 30 plus, you know, they want to be supported. So yeah, guys, that is just a summary over of Married at First Sight. We will start dropping the individual reviews of each couple um, and then breaking it down a little bit as well. So guys, make sure you stay tuned, locked in, and watch out for the next few videos, mate. Are you mad or you mad, you mad you a you got the power, yeah, 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 you got the power, appreciate you.